Okay. Last time we talked about general memory management issues. Today uh, we will cover paging. As I mentioned, this is one of the most important uh, subject for this chapter. Okay, so mainly the paging, as we mentioned before, is trying to solve one of the problems we discussed uh, is the contiguous memory allocation. So the paging, as we will see, as, uh, as a solution to address that problem, basically. Okay, and just to quickly remind you how uh, the notation we will, we will be using. So the CPU generates what we know as logical addresses or virtual addresses, basically. If you remember, we have a memory image of a program starting from address 0 up to some max. And we have some code here, some static variables here, and then this part was used for dynamic memory correlation here. And this was used as stack for uh, storing local variables when we make function calls. And then to be able to run this program in the computer's main memory, we should find a contiguous space and upload everything here. Uh, but now the problem here is we would like to solve is this, can we divide this memory uh, the logical address space into small chunks and maybe put some here and some here, right? So this way the paging will allow us to use all the memory without requiring that large uh, allocations of contiguous memory spaces. Anyway, so the addresses that are generated by the CPU within that logical address space are called logical addresses or virtual addresses. And when this address is translated and when we get into the physical address, then we say this is a physical address. So we need to have some kind of a mapping from logical addresses to the physical address. And this is done by memory management unit. Okay, again, let's continue with some notations here. Uh, to implement the paging uh, system, we need to first uh, make some notations here. So we will divide the physical memory into fixed size blocks called frames. Okay, and then we will divide the logical memory into blocks to the same size blocks called the pages. So if you say this is my memory image, code, static variable, heap, and local variable, then you divide that into small blocks and we call each one is a page and the physical memory somewhere here let's say right is also divided into the same size blocks and these are called the frames okay so that's just a notation in case of the uh, logical address space we, we, do, we call each block and uh, page and in case of the physical memory we call each block a frame okay and to be able to run a program we need if we have n pages to uh, in our logical address space we need to have n frames in the physical address space so now the good thing here is this frames does not need to be contiguous in the physical memory and they can be anywhere in the memory as long as you have a physic as a frame available so just to illustrate the point one more time for example this is our logical address space and we divided our logical address space into four blocks and each block has the uh, same size of course and then we also divided our physical memory into similar size blocks we call them frames and now each of our pages whatever we have here can be installed or uh, copied into the uh, one of the frames and now the good thing here is the frames can be anywhere and they don't need to be contiguous right but to be able to know and remember where each of these frames are we need to have some kind of a mapping and this mapping can easily can be easily done by using a page table so the page table simply says that um, for example we will of course number each page so we will call that one page zero page one page two page three assuming that the address are increasing this way and similarly that these are like frame zero frame one frame two and then addresses are increasing this way right so now in the page table by using the page number as an index right we come and we say okay page number zero according to that page table where are you f5 so then we go to f5 okay and then similarly page one if you have an address within page one we will first get uh, one and then it happens to be in f1 so we go to f1 and then if the page number is two then we get this two and use this and figure out that the corresponding frame number is f7 so we go to f7 and so on okay so once we map the page number and the page uh, 
page number and the frame number, then these blocks have the same size. So when uh, they have the same size, so that the corresponding bytes, the byte addresses are same as in the block and the, uh, and the frame. So as long as we know the page number and the corresponding frame, then the remaining part of the address is same as for these things, okay? And this is called the offset within the page. So what's the offset of this byte? Means what's the address of that byte within the page? So the address of the corresponding byte within the frame is the same, has that the same offset. So all we have to do is then, once we have the page number and then the offset number, okay? We can just use the table to figure out what's the corresponding frame number. And then the offset number will be the same as for offset number so we can combine these two to go to the physical address and this is what cp generate as a logical address so we need a table here and that's the one we will see in a second half to do this conversion basically okay um, we already mentioned that the user sees the memory as a logically contiguous space start from address 0 to some maximum number, but the OS does not need to see this allocation in that manner, so the allocations can be anywhere in the memory. So we need to do this conversions to find the right places. Okay. Uh, so let's start with some uh, examples here. So let's, um, some calculations, sorry. So let's first compute how many pages do we have in a given uh, address, logical address space. So if your logical address space is, as in the previous example, is 16 kilobyte, which can be represented at 2 to the power 14. Remember that 16 is 2 to the power uh, 4 times, and k is 2 to the power 10, right? This is where 2 to the power 14 comes from. So we need 14 bits to be able to represent every byte within that logical address space and if the page sizes are four kilobyte which is four again is to the power um to the power two and the k is to the power 10 so this is to the power 12 right so 4k is actually to the power 12 so you need 12 bits to represent each byte within the block it means you here you have uh 4, bytes and each byte can be addressed by using 12 bits basically okay so in general so what we need to do is as we saw in the previous examples if you have 16 kilobyte uh let's put it this way if you have 16 kilobyte uh logical memory and each one has four kilobyte right then effectively you will have four so by dividing this number by that number you can figure out how many pages well you will have in the system but in general if your logical address space is to the power m means that you have m bits to represent the logical addresses and if the page size is to the power n then we just need to divide to the power m divided by to the power n which can be easily done like this and which is to the power m minus n so that for example in our case to the power 14 divided by to the power 12 is going to be to the power 14 minus 12 is 2, so to the power 2. So we will affect that four pages, basically. Okay, so the logical addresses, as we discussed before, will have 14, for example, in this case, 14 bits in general, m bits. And then when we have this 14 bits, okay, let's see our example, 14 bits, we need to divide that logical address into two parts. One is going to have p bits, representing the page numbers and then the remaining we call d bits for the page offset so how many uh, bits we need to be able to address every uh, byte within the page okay so we need to divide uh, our logical address space into two parts as i said page number and the offset number and as we just computed page number and the offset number can be uh, or the number of bits that are needed for the page number and the offset number uh, we need to start with the page size of course so from the page size we can figure out how many bits we need for the offset right so either it's going to given to us or we need to calculate this one through some other design choices but let's say for now if the page now page size is four kilobytes then we know that we need 12 bits to represent every byte within the um, page so in this case the page offset 
n or the d should be 12 bits for our example and now we know that total number of bits in our logical address space were 14 bits so we can easily figure out the p is 2 bits remember with 2 bits you can represent to the power 2 many pages which is equal to 4 and that's what we found here as well and similarly here within um, 12 with 12 bits you can represent to the power 12 bytes which is uh, 4 kilobytes and that was the uh, size of our pages okay and now let's continue and I hope everybody remembers how to make this uh, trans conversions right let's say if you have to the power 44 that means you can consider it like to the power 4 for 16 and then the 10 to the power 10 to the power 10 to the power 10 to the power so you add these numbers up which would be 44 right so to the 44 can be represented like this and from here you know that this is whatever the number is to the power 10 will be make kilo mega giga and tera i think this is enough we don't need to go any further for our examples in this course so please be uh, aware of these conversions okay so the same idea for the address translation for the physical memory part frame part similarly if you have a certain amount of physical memory and if you divide it by the given frame size this time remember the page size and the frame size are the same but as a notation when we are talking about the blocks on the physical memory we call them frames okay so basically we need to uh, divide 32 kilobytes by 4 kilobytes and that will give us uh, 8 frames as we saw in the two slides ago in the picture okay and again how we are doing this basically we have to divide physical space to the power b let's say we have b bits to represent every byte within our physical memory and if the frame size is again to the power n then we will do to the power b divided by to the power n which will give us to the power b minus n uh, frames in the system okay similarly again what we are going to do is we are going to divide our physical address into two parts which will happen consist of f bits for the frame number and d bits for the offset number remember these d bits are same as in the uh, logical address space as well and once we compute our value for d which is in this case um, again 12 right 12 bits and then remember the total logical physical address space had uh, 15 bits right 15 bits so we can just 15 minus 12 so it will have 3 bits for the frame number so with three bits how many different frames we can address it will be remember to the power three which will be eight and i think that's what we find out right 32k divided by 4k 32k divided by 4k was equal to eight uh, frames and that's the same thing so you can compute these numbers in this way or that way either way is okay Okay, and again, uh, this conversion table uh, you should remember and know how to use. Okay, so once you have the CPU that generates a logical address consisting of certain number of bits, right? We said we are going to divide uh, this number of bits into two parts. We call them as P bits for the page number and D bits for the uh, offset number. Then we have to map these addresses to the physical address. But to be able to map this to the physical address, we need to know for each page what is the corresponding frame number in the system, in the physical memory. For that, we are maintaining what's called a page table. Okay, let's just use shortly page T. You can think that one is like an integer array. And by using these P bits, whatever the corresponding number is as the page number, let's call this P bits as the number of bits, but whatever the number they this P bits makes, let's call that one is page number right so this page p number will be used as an index so we will figure out which page we are talking about and the content of that page table will tell us what is the frame number so it will have these f bits right so whatever that f bit you have can be used as an uh, as is here so we will get these f bits from the table and we will just simply copy these d bits from the logical address space as well and 
concatenate both so now you got your physical address and then by using this physical address we go to the corresponding uh, value or instruction or data in the main memory in the physical memory and get this whatever you have here either read or write into the um, CPU okay okay here's like a one simple example illustrating this point one more time if I have an logical address space like so this time we divide it and name the page zero here one two three either way is fine and then the physical memory is also divided to the same size blocks and here we have eight frames and and then now when let's say initially if all the frames are available when uh, we want to execute this program operating system needs to find available frames for our pages so assume that operating system found that this frame one is available for page zero similarly page uh, two is put page one is put at frame four page two is put here and page three is put here right so once all that information is put together then we can uh, start running the program but to be able to run the program somebody needs to figure out what was that mapping so somebody needs to complete that page table right so the operating system will do it for us but just for a practice can you pause the video for a second and see what will be the content of that page table okay so when the operating system is creating uh, this um, or allocating these frames for the pages it needs to keep updating that table let's say this is the index 0 1 2 3 so these are the page number so when I put the page 0 into uh, frame 1 then here we need to put 1 saying that hey this page was in frame 1 and similarly page 1 was put into uh, frame 4 so we will put 4 here similarly for page 2 it's in frame 3 so we'll put 3 and page 3 is put into frame 7 so we will have value 7 here so this way when an address let's say here is generated right whatever it is from here when we divide it we will figure out this part is 2 and this part is whatever it is so we're using this 2 we will get here and take this 2 uh, sorry the, the content of this table which is 3 so we'll take that 3 as our frame number and within the frame whatever the address you have right so then basically now the operating system will go to the page uh, for page 2 it will go to frame 3 and the offset number will be the same offset number here so we will be able to access the corresponding bytes in that frame basically okay so with that basically we can see that that's the page table one more time and you can fill it out as well so the bottom line here is as I try to explain this diagram just simply tells us what's going on in the very basic form of the paging table okay okay here's one more example let's say in this case a very small uh, page size we are using four bytes and let's assume that our logical address is 16 bytes and the physical address space is 32 bytes so since it's a so small and the picture already tells us how to represent or have the number of pages for example in this case how many pages do I have 16 divided by 4 so we have 4 bytes how many frames do I have 32 divided by 4 so I have 8 frames but to represent using this to the power notation so the page size is to the power two so we will know that we need two bits right to represent each byte within the page so that's our the number of bits for our offset so this is our d okay and from logical address space 16 is to the power four and the physical address space is to the power five 32 is equal to third power five so now what is the number of uh bits for page number we know that it is 2 to the power 4 divided by 2 to the power 2 which will be 2 to the power 2 so to find p okay p bits we will just take that minus that so 4 minus 2 will be 2 similarly for the f we know that we have 2 to the power 5 so divided by 2 to the power 2 so it will be 5 minus 2 which will be 3 so you need 
three bits for the frame numbers and two bits for the page numbers and again two to the power two is four you have four pages two to the power three is eight so you have eight frames so you can also compute it that way okay and this is the again the key diagram that you need to understand and see how that works and from here we already addressed this question so the number of pages is this which is two to the power two and from here we know that this is the uh, number of bits for page to the power uh, sorry the, the number of frames is 32 divided by 4 so this is to the power 3 so this is again number of uh, f bits this is number of p bits right so the page number um, actually here I will say page now the bits for page number and the bit but for so we already find that this is 2 this is uh, 2 as well and the frame number f bit is 3 and how about the page table size so how big that table is okay so that's probably the next question so in this case you need to first figure out how many entries I have in my table right if I want to say what's the size of these things I need to know how many entries I have in that table and we know that how many entries we have for each page we need to have one entry so the number of pages is same as the number of entries here which is to the power p entries we have and then now we need to find out what's the size of each entry see in the con the content of this page table should have at least some information about the frame right so we need to have at least f bits to represent our table so in this case since f is 3 bits so and p is 2 we can simply say 2 to the power 2 times 3 bits so that table with that size will be enough but usually what we do instead of dealing with this uh, bits we assume that each table entry will of course contain f bits definitely but plus some control bits okay so we will explain this control bits later on but just to make life easier we will assume that each table entry will have definitely f bits plus some control bits and when you're deciding on the number of control bits just for the time being assume that the total entry size we will make it eight bits if that's enough if the f bit is more than eight bits then means you need some control bits so let's just go with the notation and say six bits 16 bits or 32 bits etc so this way we can assume that this is one byte this is two byte and this is like four byte and then and so on okay so please use that notation so with that idea if the each entry size is one byte then we have two to the power two which is four times one byte so all together will be four bytes so each table size uh, for each process by the way we need to have a table will have four bytes and that information either can be maintained in the OS or it can be maintained as part of the um, process control block if it is so small right but if it's too big then the OS will allocate maybe a frame for that one in the physical memory and then has an uh, information or the address of that frame within the process control block remember the process control block knows everything about the process including the memory informations and things like this okay let's continue uh, with some examples so let's assume our logical address space has 21 bits in other words it has 2 megabyte uh, so if I just gave you 2 megabyte you can easily convert that into 2 is to the power 1 times mega is remember to the power 20 right so Okay, similarly, uh, we can convert the one megabyte to two to the power zero is for one times for mega, we will have two to the power 20. So you have two to the power 20. Okay, so this is 20 bits you need to represent every byte on the physical memory, and you need 21 bits to represent every byte in the logical address space. So we may or may not give you the page uh, or the frame size. 
and then depending on the system, other system parameters we may ask you to find that number or we may give you that number in advance right so let's right now let's assume we are giving that the page number in this system is uh, page size on this system is going to be two kilobytes and again using the same notation to the power two is to the power sorry one is for two and for kilo we will have to the power 10 so you have to the power 11 right? so this 11 bits are required to address every byte within the page remember that number is the number of bits that are necessary to have access every byte within a given page or within a given frame and we call that one as offset okay so now given these numbers we can easily compute what is p what is uh, uh, d which is i already mentioned d is 11 right we can easily compute the uh, uh, other uh, number of bits like f and d so please pause the video for a second and first determine what is p what is d okay okay so since we decided that the page size is going to be two kilobytes so we will assume that it is 11 bits needed for the offset so the remaining bits on the virtual address space basically 10 bits like 21 minus 11 will be 10 bits will be used for our page numbers and similarly on the physical address space we are going to use 11 bits for addressing each byte so the remaining bits which is 20 minus 11 will have um, yeah will will be used for the physical uh, for the frame number so we will have nine bits for the frame number so just from this picture can you tell me how many pages we have right it is to the power 10 pages we will have and for the frame number we will have so we can also easily compute the number of physical uh, frames which is going to be nine bits are used to address every frame so to the power nine uh, so which is equal to uh, 12 and this number is equal to 1024 right so we have that many pages and we have that many frames basically okay um so how about the size of a page table remember for a page table we need to have that many entries and each entry must have that many bits plus some control bits okay so with that one we can at least assume that each page entry will have two bytes why because nine plus some control bits will be either eight it's more than eight so we should make it like a 16 bits which is equal to two bytes so we'll assume that each entry is two bytes and then we know that we have one kilo to the power 10 many pages right so that many pages times two bytes will be two kilobyte information is needed for each process uh, this is a page table and I call this is a good design and I hope you can see why I call it a good design but basically the idea is if a page table can fit into one physical page or a frame then the operating system doesn't need to worry about anything else it can simply allocate one uh, frame for the page table of this process and maintain its address in the process control block so that it can access that page as an array of frame numbers basically okay so that's uh, one of the good design choices so that's why last when i ask you to think about the page size maybe we have to play with these system parameters to figure out what how many bits i should have in my pages so that i can have uh, i can have page table to fit into one frame or one page basically if it fits into more than one pages then the operating system now behind the scene needs to allocate two consecutive frame because the page table will be used like an array right so if i need two pages or two frames for a page table then the operating system needs to allocate them consecutively so that we can access that as an array of uh, pages and now what will happen if the page table requires let's say uh, 100 frames in that case now the operating system needs to find a physically contiguous 100 frames and allocate them for a page table and as you see now this was the original problem we were trying to solve right 
and uh, to now uh, if that happens if you really get very big, big big page tables and that will happen in some systems in this case we will recursively use the same idea and instead of creating one big page table we will create one master page table and then using this page table to have other page tables anywhere in the network so we will basically page the page table okay so that will create two level three level page tables as we will discuss later on basically okay for now let's just assume that we are dealing with one level pages and as a good design for one level pages it is good to play with the system parameters so that you can get uh, one page table in to fit into one physical frame in the system Here's another example. Let's say now we have 64 kilobyte virtual memory and 32 kilobyte physical memory. I would like you guys to find out how many bits we have in the physical, uh, on the virtual memory and physical memory. Okay, first pause the video and work on these numbers for a second. Okay, I hope everybody find out that the number of bits in the virtual address space will be 16. Why? Because 64 is to the power 6 and the K is to the power 10. So it will be to the power 16 bytes, right? So this is 16 is the number of bits for the virtual address space. Similarly, 32K can be written as like to the power 5 times to the power 10 and this will be to the power 15. So this 15 will be the number of physical bits. Now what we need to do, we need to translate our virtual addresses into physical addresses. But to be able to do this one, we need to know what is the page table size. Okay. So if my page table size is given as 4 kilobytes, then 4 is can be written as like 2 to the power 2 is for 4 times 2 to the power 10 is equal to 2 to the power 12 bytes right so this 12 bits here tells us that how many bits we need as an offset so that we can address every byte within our uh, page okay okay so now when you divide your logical address space into two you will have 12 bits for your offset and then the remaining bits 16 minus 12 is going to be four bits for your page number part and similarly the physical addresses uh, which was 15 bits and we will use 12 bits for our offsets so that the remaining three bits will be used for our frame numbers and if i just ask how many virtual pages do i have basically that you have four bits to address every page so it will be to the power four which will be 16 pages in that system right and similarly if i ask how many physical frames i have since we are using three bits to address every frame so that will have to the power three which is eight frames in that system basically and now we need to create a table so that we can for example here we will have a page table how many entries we have 16 right so we will have 16 entries in whatever that page number is we're going to use that as an index and from here we will get this f bits right and then we will get whatever the 12 bits we have here combined together and now you get your uh, so this three bits will be received from the table and we will combine together and get our physical address right so that's the whole address translation business here now let's just discuss what is the size of a page table. Now we just uh, have to figure out how many entries we have in that table. As we just discussed, we have to the power four, 16 entries. So in the table, we have 16 entries, zero, one, two, three, plus one is 15, right? So we have 16 entries and the size of each entry is going to be, remember, we have at least F bits. And from this picture, F is going to be three bits. But we said uh, add some control bits. In this case, let's add five control bits. So altogether, it will be one byte, right? So each entry is going to be one byte. So in that case, 16 times one byte is equal to 16 bytes. So the tables, uh, page table for each process is going to have 16 bytes, basically. Okay, 
So I just want to emphasize this picture one more time because this is the uh, picture you will really need in, uh, in some exam questions and also in the part one of the next assignment you will be simply implementing that, uh, the, the ideas from that table. CPU generates a logical address. Depending on the system parameters, we will divide that into two parts, D bits and F bits. And using this uh, P bits as the page number, we will access the table. From the table, we will get F bits as the frame number, and then copy these D bits as is. And together, we will create a physical address and access that physical address in the memory. Okay, in general, the size of a page table entry, as we mentioned, is the number of page table entries, which is the number of pages to the power P, and the size of each entry, okay? And if, if you remember, I mentioned this, at least we need F bits, because we need to know what's the frame number, plus some control bits. And when we are making the numbers, uh, decision about the number of control bits, for now, just try to make this as like a multiples of bytes, okay? Let's if you have three bits here, then add five bits here. If you have seven bits here, then add just one control bit for now, okay? And where should we uh, keep the page table or how do we know where the address of the page table is? Remember, each process has a process control block and there are several fields in it. Remember like process uh, program counter, uh, CPU image, some registers, some other information, and definitely there's memory addresses like, remember previously we were talking about the base address, base register, and now we will worry about what is the page table, etc. So all that information would be maintained in the process control block, basically. Okay, so one uh, question might be, uh, to decide on what should be the page or the frame size and what are the advantages or disadvantages of making it too big or too small because this is a configuration parameter you can decide, right? So in real systems, these numbers changes from this many bytes to this many kilobytes, basically. So there's like a wide spectrum of uh, systems out there. But we will just discuss in general what are the advantages and disadvantages. So if you make the some pages smaller so remember we have this logical address space or we have this physical address space right so when we decide on the page number if we make it small then we are dividing our pages and the physical memory into smaller smaller pages that's what happens right so what are the advantages or disadvantages of these things so one is we will have definitely this is the advantage we will have less internal fragmentation why because when we are allocating the physical memory we will allocate it uh, by uh, frame by frame right so if i give you a frame and if you don't use all of it but then the remaining part will be really little right because the page sizes or frame sizes are small so we're not going to waste too much and remember this one was called the internal fragmentation by the way with the paging we don't have an external fragmentation anymore because we are utilizing all our pages but once we give a frame some part of that frame may not be used because maybe the user doesn't need that much data right so in that case that will be an internal fragmentation but by making the size of frame smaller and smaller we can avoid or minimize that problem uh, also i mean uh, it will be a better fit for various data structures code sections etc and the negative part of this thing is if you make the uh, page size smaller and smaller then you have more pages and more frames and to be able to represent those frames and pages you need more bits like p bits and the f bits will be higher and higher and that will create a problem for us because then the pages are small and you have too many pages so your pages may not fit into one frame for the good design uh, choices right so in that case we may want to have a balance okay and the other alternative is you can make them larger so in this case let's say if this is your logical address space this is your physical memory so you can divide it into larger and larger pages but in this case clearly um, you will have less smaller page tables because you have less number of pages right so that will be an 
good thing. And it might be also uh, more efficient to transfer large pages to the disk and from the disk. Um, because when you are reading, writing something to the specific the old disks, I um, mean, reading one byte is not as efficient as reading 10,000 bytes because the, 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 the data read and <clears throat> Uh, written back to the disk in a block base so it's better to read write multiple bytes uh, but uh, the, the one of the negative things here see this was an advantage here internal fragmentation but now it will be an disadvantage because once you gave a frame to a user if you don't need all of this let's see if you just need that much then the remaining part will be wasted but that was not an issue here right because whatever you lose will be uh, minimized so these are some of the advantages and disadvantages and as I mentioned before one of the good design principle is to make sure that your page table fits into one frame so that the OS can allocate uh, one frame for your page table rather than trying to find multiple contiguous frames. But if that happens depending on maybe that logical address space is too large and you may need uh, multiple pages in your or frames in your page table then we can introduce something called the multi-level paging, paging the page-to-page -page table idea. We will discuss next time. Okay, now on this slide, I just want to talk a little bit about the uh, control bits we were talking about. So basically, remember, each table entry will have F bits, right, for the frame number part. But then we also have a couple of bits for, let's say, um, one of the bits we are going to use later on in the virtual memory protection is the called the valid bit that tells us whether this frame uh, is in the uh, physical memory or not so basically we have a page we, ins we assign this to the certain frame but some of these frames uh, may not be available at this point because they are not actually in the physical memory uh, we can also have some uh, other controls like the reference bit which will tell us whether this page is being used or not um, or whether that data has been accessed or not so this way we can know what to do with that page the dirty bit is simply saying if anything after reading that from the disk if anything is changed because if we are going to throw this page later on or that frame later on if dirty bit is changed maybe we need to rewrite that one back onto disk otherwise we can just throw it away because the disk copy and the, the main memory copy are the same and then we also have some other protection bits that tells us whether this block is read only or read write only for example if a page or a frame contains uh, actual code the operating system will put that as a read only page so this way the users cannot change the code right so this will be some kind of a protection for the viruses and things or accidental overwrites of the code basically and the size of the page table is at least a frame number plus two, three bits. Uh, we already discussed this. That's why we are saying, okay, we will have F bits for the frame plus some control bits. So all together, we will assume that these are either multiples of one byte, two byte or four byte uh, entries so that we can make our calculation easy. Okay. We'll talk about the uh, control bits a little bit more in detail later on, but let's just illustrate uh, one of the bits called the valid or invalid bit. So let's say these are the page pages we have. And as you see in the system, I have uh, six pages, but the uh, page five has some data and then the remaining part is, since, let's say, simply junk. Okay. And then the other pages are not being used. So, but if the page table has more uh, entries in it, then the bits for those pages will be invalid invalid so if the user gives any address that corresponds to the physical addresses within these pages system the operating system will say that oh, okay this is invalid this is invalid so it will not allow you to access anything but for the other pages these bits are set to the one means that okay for each of this page we allocated some frames in the memory just for the last page here because even though that whole page is valid but not every um, bit within that page are used right so if the user is trying to access that page yes you will pass that test but still because the length pointer which is maintained in your control process control block will make sure that the system will uh, 
not allow you to access or to read right into this part of the memory okay so there are so many control bits that help you to uh, decide on this uh, error checkings basically okay so let's just continue with uh, the general ideas about what are the advantages disadvantages of using paging first of all the paging allows uh, sharing code among multiple processes so how that happens we will discuss that in a second it also allows provide a dynamic reallocation of the pages or the frames to the uh, users and it totally eliminates external fragmentation there is no external fragmentation anymore and it also allows us to protect um, uh, different parts of the memory so if for example if, if there's a uh, executable code if you put that into one page and set the protection bits to read only then the processes can only read the instructions from that page but not write onto it right uh, there are some issues of course like disadvantages wise um, it internal fragmentation is still an issue right so when we uh, give you let's say in the physical memory even if i give you let's say this one frame and even if you're just using one byte then i have to still give you the whole frame right so now this is what's called an internal fragmentation and as we mentioned before to minimize the impact of these things you can create smaller frames smaller pages but then remember this one also has a disadvantage of uh, creating too many frames too many pages so we have to have some kind of a balance between these two parameters and we also need to have some control information behind the scene to figure out where are the free frames and things like this right so the uh, cpu needs i mean sorry the operating system needs to uh, have some data structures to maintain uh, free frames and be able to allocate them as they need it and for each table so that's also a disadvantage for each table we need to um, allocate memory for a page table plus this also creates another issue is this right so if, if we have if, if the cpu generates the physical uh, address record right in one memory access we will go and get the data but now to access the memory to get the data we first need to call page table which is also in the memory and then from the page table we will find out what is the actual physical address then we will go to the physical address so now every uh, memory access now effectively becomes like two memory access clearly that will slow down most of the many programs and we will see how to deal with that problem in the next lecture basically uh, so given that uh, these are general advantages disadvantages the other questions we will we mentioned is whether the small uh, pages should be big or small and can you say how would you justify whether the pages should be small or the large yes if they are small then they will have less internal fragmentation but you will generate big page tables and if you pick uh, page tables big then we will have small page tables that's a good thing and we will have efficient input output uh, on the disk but we will create more internal fragmentation so that would be an disadvantage so be able to uh, address this type of questions in different contexts what are the addresses and things like this and uh, also like i think this is probably a disadvantage it needs extra hardware support to effectively resolve uh, these translations from logical addresses to the physical addresses I think okay so let's talk about one of the advantages of the uh, paging uh, which is called the code sharing so remember previously to be able to run a program each program as uh, uh, logical address space let's say this is program one and this is program two so we have to be able to allocate a space for program one and program two in the physical memory so now let's see what happens even if i have the same code here and the same code here this two needs to have their own spaces in the physical memory so they cannot really share that uh, piece of the code so for example if let's say if you are running the vi editor most of the code is the same right it's not going to change only the data part of that code will change but in the old systems for each uh, execute for each user the system supposed to allocate this much space for the second user this much space and then run the let's say the vi editor most of the code executable part is the same this so they were not 
going to be able to share. But with the paging, we will see that that's possible. So basically, if this part is the same, this part is the same for these two users, we really don't need to allocate that many physical places two times, three times. So we can only allocate once and let these users to share that. And that's possible using the paging. So let's see how that works, basically. So here is the idea. So let's say uh, this is for process uh, one. So the editor one, editor two, editor three, and data one. So this part is the executable code. And this is going to be the same for every user, right? If these users are going to use that editor, only their data part will be different. These frames will be different, but their um, codes will be the same. So if we are running in the old system, we need to allocate that much space plus that much space plus that much space to be able to support these three users. But if we use a paging system where we can do something like this, okay, so so each of these guys will have a page table, right? Here is this page table, here is this page table, here is this page table. So the operating system behind the scene, knowing that these codes are the same for all these users, can maintain, let's say, this part of the um, code here in the physical memory and then it simply just puts the address of that part into everybody's page table okay and similar to the other pages will be only maintained once and all of them will be pointing to the same thing and then only the code that is let's say my program that's my data and your data will be maintained in different pages here right and now for each process okay we see that as the logical address space and this process thinks that's the logical address space and this process thinks this is the logical address space but behind the scene all these pages are maintained only once here 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 um, etc okay so that is really a good advantage of using sharing uh, sharing the pages because it minimizes the uh, memory usage a lot so this way we can now support more users or we can run larger programs basically right okay um, this example I will leave this as an, as an exercise which basically just says can you compute the internal fragmentation size which is really easy all you have to figure out what's the page size and then what is the process size so to be able to support that process size right we need to allocate enough pages so you will divide that number by that number or that number because that's the number page size and take the ceilings so that you can find out how many pages you can have and then for the last page just figure out how many bytes are not used given that size so that's your internal fragmentation size basically Okay, I think on average, uh, the internal fragmentation, uh, because some of these processes will use the whole page, some of the processes will use only one byte. So if you take many, many last frames, on average, half of this frame size will be wasted. So that's why if you make the frame sizes smaller and smaller, you will lose less. But we know that that creates other problems like larger page tables and things like this. So... Uh, small frame sizes is desirable in that case but that also creates another problem in terms of um, in terms of um, number of page table entries and the page table size okay another disadvantage of this uh, paging thing was the operating system needs to maintain the free blocks and be able to allocate them etc right so for this one it needs to maintain some kind of a data structure which can be a linked list or maybe a uh, bitmap as we discussed before uh, in the context of like a disk allocations and things like this so that's pretty much the same problem so we are not going to discuss this too much here okay i would like to stop here and next time we will see how the page tables can be implemented and how can we improve the access time because this was one of the major problems with the paging because every memory access to access each data now we need at least two memory accesses and that will definitely slow down our processes and we'd like to see how we can speed up memory accesses effectively